Let's talk about murmurs. When dealing with questions involving identification of different types of murmurs, we need to have two things in our mind. The first being in which auscultatory areas is the murmur best heard at, and the second being in which phase of the cardiac cycle is the murmur heard. And for the auscultatory areas, I have this figure that shows different auscultatory areas. On the second intercostal space, we have aortic and pulmonic area. On the fourth, we have the tricuspid. And on the fifth, on the midclavicular line, we have the mitral area. The way I remember this is by using this mnemonic, APTM. Uh, it looks like the abbreviation of the word apartment. So I just remember the word apartment and the rest of it comes naturally to me. Uh, there are other ones out there. Uh, the one I've seen most of my friends use is all physicians take money, uh, but you can use either. The thing that I wanted to share with you in this video is something called the Mama Man. Uh, this is something that I have come across recently with, and it's a visual aid which helps us remember in which phase of the cardiac cycle different murmurs are heard. So we will uh, draw the Mama Man in this video, and we will solve a question to put mama man into test. So let's start with the legs. So here are the legs of the mama man. And these two legs represent the normal heart sounds S1 and S2. And everything that I write in between these two lines will represent our systolic murmurs because systole is between S1 and S2. And everything that I write beyond these two lines will represent diastolic murmurs because diastole uh, starts after S2 and before S1. So all this written in between S1 and S2 will represent our systolic murmurs and the rest of it will represent diastolic murmurs. And since diastole starts after S2, this uh, will represent our early diastole and this will represent our late diastole. Now let's go to the trunk of our mama man. This is the trunk and everything written within the trunk will represent hollow systolic murmurs. And let's do the head. And rest of the systolic murmurs will be represented by the head. And let's do the arms as well. And the arms will represent the diastolic murmurs. Now, one more thing before we start fill filling in the details is the mnemonic we talked about earlier, this APTM. It's good to remember this mnemonic because um, wherever there is A, there is also P, and wherever there is T, there is also M in this murmur, man. So uh, it would be helpful to remember this. So let's start. Since this is our murmur man, we will address him as Mr. This is representing mitral resuscitation. And since M will always be accompanied by T, tricuspid resuscitation will also be here. And now let's fill in the arms. Let's write A, R, M, S. So aortic resuscitation and mitral stenosis. And since A will be accompanied by P, pulmonic resuscitation and tricuspid stenosis. And the rest of the murmurs will go here. Aortic stenosis and pulmonic stenosis. So we're almost done. Let's fill in some extra details as well. So the shape of these two murmurs will be represented by this crescendo and decrescendo, this crescendo and decrescendo. Similarly, these two will be preceded by a opening snap. And we can also add a decrescendo here. And it's commonly referred to as early decrescendo and a crescendo here. And let's add some other murmurs not covered by this murmur man, such as the patent ductus arteriosus, the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, the murmur of mitral valve prolapse for ventricular septal defect and atrial septal defect. So this for patent ductus arteriosus it would be a continuous murmur heard across systole and diastole. For hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, it would be a systolic murmur, so we can add it here. And mitral valve prolapse will also be a systolic murmur and similarly ventricular septal defect will be a hollow systolic murmur and AST it can be systolic or diastolic if it is a systolic murmur it would be best heard at the pulmonic area if it is diastolic murmur it would be heard at the tricuspid area and this is the second and third respectively systole and diastole uh, to add a few extra details so this 
P will represent the pulmonic area in which this murmur of peat and doctor's arteriosus would be best heard at. This mitral, M will represent the mitral area and the rest of these two will be heard at the tricuspid area. And let's also talk about the radiation of these murmurs. So the atrial stenosis will re radiate towards the neck. So from the head, it will go towards the neck and this mitral resuscitation will radiate towards the axilla, from the trunk to the axilla. So, and one more thing that we must remember is that if the mama is from the defect in the right side of the heart, it would increase in intensity with inspiration. So uh, pulmonic stenosis and pulmonic resuscitation, tricuspid resuscitation, tricuspid tricus stenosis, the murmurs of these defects will increase so we are done with our mama man. Let's put this man into a test. I have a question designed. So it says, there's a horse holosystolic mama uh, with this word. Three mamas must come to your mind. The three represented by the trunk. Uh, so that is mitral resuscitation and tricuspid resuscitation and ventricular septal defect. And mama that is found at the apex. Apex will represent the mitral so from the first sentence only we can s probably guess that the murmur is of mitral resuscitation. But let's finish this question. The sound of the murmur does not get louder with inspiration. So it does not get louder with inspiration. Had it gotten louder with inspiration, we could say that it could be because of defect in either tricuspid valve or the pulmonic valve. But since it does not get louder with inspiration, we can say that it is not because of tricuspid resuscitation. And the sound can read it to the left axilla and sometimes to the left sternal border. And this says that it is because of mitral resuscitation. And what is the most likely murmur? It is mitral valve resuscitation. Thank you.